She likes sugar, spice, and everything nice. I like snakes and trails and puppy dog tails. <laughs> she likes classy lodging, cultural art, and fancy foods. I like finding weird animals, roughing it in the jungle, and budget accommodations. We both love snorkeling and whales. In this video, we set out to find humpback whales in French Polynesia. These are our incredible experiences. We're all waiting for the Eco Park bus to take us to the airport. What could possibly go wrong? Moria is a little island 15 kilometers or so from Tahiti. To get there, we flew to San Francisco and then boarded a direct flight to Tahiti. Halfway there, we flew across the ITCZ, or Intertropical Convergence Zone, a birthplace for tropical storms and turbulence. After safely landing in Tahiti, we took a taxi to a speed ferry. And 20 minutes later, step into the dreamiest paradise. Wow. Our first night, we stayed at a quaint hillside Airbnb, hoping to spot whales from the deck. Voila. I see you. <laughs> Station, oh, 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 oh. Oh my God. I got it. Come back, come back. Oh my there God. they are, there they are, it's you. Wow. While we monitored the humpback whales, a copper-tailed skink was closely monitoring us. Oh! I wish Wu Young Wu was here. <laughs> this was our first time seeing humpback whales. As if you couldn't tell. And I gotta say, guys, I was blindsided by them. Between July and early November, humpback whales return to the calm, warm waters in Polynesia to mate or give birth. For a heartwarming 20 minutes, we documented this loving mother doting on her playful baby. It seemed the mother was encouraging her calf to nurse, but the curious little whale was more interested in exploring. But not too far from mom's watchful eyes. During a peaceful afternoon in the ocean, the little family relished each other's company with gentle nudging, body rubbing, and affection. Where'd you get those vegetables? It's in the freezer. She's whipping up some serious gourmet food over there with found food. It only expired like a couple years ago. So a lot of bugs outside. They're just mayflies or something, so they don't bite, but they're dropping out of the lights into our food. Oh, there's one on my neck. I feel him. Oh, he's on my chin. Oh, you're gonna love this, baby. They're not biting, but uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and eat inside tonight. Voila. Moria translates to yellow lizard. In the bathroom, we found the gecko the island was named after. Side note, there were no flying bugs in the bathroom. If you've seen our travel videos before, you 
know I love to find the precious little animals near the hotels we stay in and share them with the world. I'm not entirely positive the hotels like this kind of publicity. I can't see why not. In Malria, we really wanted to experience a bungalow over the lagoon. At the Hilton, rooms were an excessive 1200 bucks a night. So we thought we'd try to use this channel's 1 million subscribers as leverage to get a free room. And the Hilton was quick to respond. Just down the hill from our Airbnb, we could see the Sofitel bungalows. These were only 750 bucks, but for one night on our eighth year anniversary, we decided to take the plunge. From your bungalow deck, you can plop right into the marine wonderland. Meandering through boulders of healthy coral in the crystal waters, we saw titan triggerfish, orange striped triggerfish, butterfly fish, a spotted boxfish, tons of chromies and humbugs, and every diver's all-time favorite a sea cucumber. <laughs> the long Sofitel beaches had ample elbow room to sun, wade, and swim. There was also a lily pond if you prefer. So stay here forever. If you didn't get your fill of fish and other sea creatures snorkeling, there's plenty more in the Ocean View restaurant. We turned on our light, yeah. and there's just a big sea cucumber, that's it. Como se va, sea cucumber? <laughs> in the morning, the breakfast buffet overlooking the Blue Lagoon will satisfy the most voracious appetites. <laughs> For our next adventure, we just had to try swimming in the ocean with humpback whales. It's said to be one of the most beautiful underwater observations in the world. It's one of the most beautiful underwater observations in the world. This is our tour guide. We forgot his name, so we just called him Papa Love. Here we are in the big sanctuary for 20 years now. Swimming near whales here is a regulated process that requires patience. Despite all the waiting and bobbing around, there's boatloads of excitement and anticipation. If the opportunity arrives, swimmers are cautioned to slip softly into the water, swim far from the boat out into the open abyss, and cross your fingers. The law here specifies boats may not approach closer than 100 meters to whales, 150 if it's a mom and calf. Regulations Papa Love respects. Our first two attempts, there were no whales in sight, Yet, the thunderous volume of their song shook your chest. It was beautiful and eerie. During our third attempt, storm clouds and a low sun left little light to see underwater. But Papa Love spotted two giants in the depths below. It was too dark to capture quality footage, but the memory of this incredible experience is still vibrant. Yeah. 
in part two of this video. Chicks versus coconuts plus stingrays that beg like dogs and dogs Let's go. that are tour guides all the way up there. He's like, hurry up, slow pokes. We're coming. This is a pretty steep grade. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, our tour guide isn't waiting for us. Almost there. But for now, here's two humpback whales waving goodbye. Till next time, friends. Happy trails.